This educational video is intended to prepare you for your upcoming DBS neurosurgery. It has been developed to answer common questions and concerns associated with DBS. Our team is particularly grateful for the assistance provided by our Kaiser DBS patients in the development of this program. From the time you arrive at the hospital, your Kaiser team will assist you through every phase of your DBS journey to ensure your comfort and well-being. Our highly trained team of surgeons and medical staff will use the most advanced technology in order to provide you with the best possible care and outcome. My name is Dr. Mark Sedrak. I'm the Director of Functional Neurosurgery at Kaiser Permanente. With me today is my colleague, Dr. Patrick Pozeskian. Our team strives to provide excellent care for every one of our patients, and we hope that this will answer many of the questions you may now have about surgery. Our dedicated functional neurosurgery team includes two neurosurgeons, a neurologist, two physician assistants, two biomedical engineers, and a dedicated group of nurses and medical assistants. Deep brain stimulation is a surgical procedure that involves placement of electrodes in precise areas of the brain for the treatment of various movement disorders, such as Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, dystonias, and a variety of other disorders. The cornerstone of our program is the ultra-precise placement of these electrodes in an effort to accomplish the best result for you. As part of this program, we'll be covering topics on what to expect prior to surgery, during surgery, and afterwards, and answering any questions that you and your loved one may have about the procedure. Hi, my name is Elena Call. I'm a movement disorder specialist here in Redwood City. I'll be working with your surgical team in the OR to get the best possible outcome for your surgery. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Sableman, one of bioengineers at Redwood City. It's our task to make sure that the electrode placement is done with the highest precision for best possible outcome. My name is Ross Anderson, and I am one of the biomedical engineers on the team. My role is to assure that the technical aspects of your surgery go according to plan. That way, we can give you the best possible outcome from your neurosurgical procedure. My name is Siddharth Shivasa, PhD in Electrical Engineering, and I am the Biomedical Engineer with the Function Neurosurgery Group. My role in the OR is to ensure a safe and an accurate placement of the DBS lead. I'll be there in the OR with you to ensure that you have a safe and a comfortable OR experience. I'm Ivan Bernstein, one of your two PAs here at Kaiser Redwood City. Along with me is my colleague, Dinah Bruce. Our goal is to ensure seamless quality care for you from start to end. We'd like to encourage you, our most important team member, and your family to watch the video links provided at the end of the program. You will be asked to report to the second floor surgery admitting area at 6 a.m. on the day of surgery. Your loved ones may or may not be able to remain in the waiting room based on the most current health guidelines. You will be taken to the pre-operative unit where your nurse will review your medications and start an IV. The hair on your scalp will be fully clipped. You will meet with your anesthesia provider who will explain how anesthesia will be administered and what you can expect. Your neurosurgeon and PA will meet with you to answer any questions you may have before going into surgery. Your OR nurse and anesthesia provider will then take you to the operating room for the placement of your head ring. Upon arrival to the operating room, you will get to meet your entire DBS team. They will discuss with you the four to six hour DBS procedure. They will confirm the details of your DBS, such as surgical site, implants, allergies, and medications, ensuring your safety and comfort. Once this briefing is completed, your team will begin the head ring placement process. Accurate sizing and precision positioning are essential. You will receive a local anesthetic at the pin sites of your scalp to keep you comfortable. Your anesthesia provider will give you IV pain medication as well. While the team is placing the head ring, you will remain okay. awake 
and be able to communicate with the team to facilitate head ring positioning. After the head ring is placed and secured, your DBS team will carefully transport you for a CT scan of your head. This CT scan will help your neurosurgeon ensure precise accuracy of your DBS lead. Once you arrive in the CT room, your team will transfer you safely to the scanner bed from your gurney and secure your head ring to the scanner for a short CT scan. You will be continually monitored from the control room for your comfort and safety. This CT scan serves to confirm that the head ring post pins are securely fastened and provides visualization for surgery target planning. Based on the most current health guidelines, your loved ones may or may not be able to check in with you. During this time, we will prepare you for what to expect upon re-entering the OR. As you have already learned, you have many members of your dedicated neurosurgical team who you will see in the OR performing tasks with the latest technology to ensure a safe and positive outcome. Your team will position you in order to ensure your comfort and safety for the duration of the procedure. Know that each one of them is there for a specific reason in order to optimize your DBS surgical experience. Do you prefer your neck like this or you want it a little extended? Are you okay? At this point, your neurosurgeon and other members of the team will finalize the positioning of the frame, the entry point for the drilling part of the procedure, and importantly, the precise positioning of the lead placement. Although you will feel no pain, the drilling sound can be loud. Your PA will be next to you to provide coaching and comfort. Okay, so can you say lovely yellow lilies for me? Lovely yellow lilies for you. Perfect. <laughs> After the drilling part of the procedure is completed, our movement disorder neurologist will perform a baseline assessment prior to the mapping process. Okay. What's your biggest goal for the surgery? Get rid of the trauma. During this mapping portion of your DBS, your neurosurgeon and neurologist will monitor specific brain activity. Your neurologist will check your visual and speech response. They will check your motor function response by passively moving your arms and legs. The purpose of this is to confirm and prepare for final precise DBS lead placement. The bioengineer on your neurosurgery team will be providing confirmation through the use of state-of-the-art imaging software to validate optimal lead placement. This is a demonstration using a mannequin showing how the DBS electrode will ultimately be connected to the pulse generator in the chest. This procedure will be done under general anesthesia under sterile conditions, but for demonstration purposes here we're using a mannequin. An incision will be first planned behind the ear where the tail end of the DBS electrode will be connected to the extension cable. The extension cable as shown here will then be tunneled under the skin and exits at a separate incision about three to four finger breaths below the collarbone in the chest, where it will be then connected to the battery. When your lead placement is confirmed, your neurosurgeon will complete the procedure. You will either be taken to the recovery room or your DBS battery will be placed. After your procedure, you will be transferred to the recovery area where you will be monitored for a period of time. Based on current health guidelines, you may be given the opportunity to meet with your loved ones before being transferred to your hospital room on the fifth floor. Once you arrive to your private room on the fifth floor, your nurse will meet you to help you with recovery, monitor your vital signs, and provide you with pain medication to ensure you are comfortable. The following day, they will make sure you receive a physical therapy evaluation as well as review discharge instructions okay. before you go home.
Hi, I'm Darcy Blake and I've had two DBS surgeries. Um, I think it was a life-changing experience and I would do it again if you need it. The three areas that it helped me with are um, one, the tremor in the hand, which I don't have anymore. Two, the rigidity in my arms, which I don't have anymore. And three, the dystonia in my left leg, which is also gone. My name is Didi Parekh and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's about five years ago. Basically, I decided to do DBS at the time when my medicine had reached about a level of six tablets per day. And I was beginning to see some side effects of that, which was uh, dyskinesia. And uh, my first thing reaction was, should I really be doing it? Because again, of the brain consideration and so on, the basically people are scared of the word brain surgery. My main objective of the DBS were two. One is to reduce the side effects in the long-term basis with the medicine, and the second one was, the, of course, the, the tumor. And uh, after the surgery, I was able to achieve both of these goals quite well. And uh, uh, so it was a whole thing was a very painless process for me, and the recovery was amazing. I was never bedridden from day one of walking around and uh, I'm about only six weeks into after the post-surgery and I'm back to pretty much managing my own things. My name is Lee Swenson and I live in Palo Alto. I've been a member of Kaiser my whole academic career. I've been retired for about uh, 15 years and uh, my uh, first awareness that I probably had Parkinson's was 15 years ago when I was in Switzerland and uh, I had a tremor, kind of a hidden tremor. And I started taking the medicine and uh, right before surgery, which was about two years ago, I was taking about 20 pills a day, mostly Cinemet and also Comtan. And since surgery, I basically have reduced that to one pill a day. And uh, I had a first surgery that was my left, left hemisphere and then I had another surgery, which was my right hemisphere. And both of them were fabulous. I had no worries going in. I had no worries coming out. I, I was walking around the neighborhood after the second day, and it was kind of a miracle. In fact, it was a miracle. <laughs> and uh, the team that operated on me was Dr. Sedrak, Ivan and Diana, and then their cast of thousands well, maybe not quite thousands, but hundreds. <laughs> Hi, my name is Baljeet Chahal. I'm a veterinary surgeon, and my quality of life before getting the DBS done, which was in December of 2018, was not that great. I was not able to eat. I was not able to put a spoon with the soup in my mouth. Properly, I was spilling all over then I had to become left-handed. My surgery time had increased from the 10 to 15 minute surgery up to 45 minutes. But uh, since the DBS has been done and the programming started in about five months, by the end of May, I started feeling much better. My hand movements, my motor skills were better. And since then, I started gaining confidence that uh, yes, I can do the work I can do the perform the surgeries and now I am doing the same old surgeries which was taking me about 45 to 50 minutes. I am doing them in 20 to 25 minutes. So that was my normal time even before having all this dystonia problems. And I my confidence was made very high by Dr. Tazeshkin and his team that yes you could gain 50 to 55 percent motor skills back but not more than that but we still cannot promise anything but my motor skills are back now by 90 percent and over 90 percent I would say and I am much happier man much confident man and I would recommend this DBS for any person who has the symptoms like me or having any difficulty in eating, drinking, performing their own work, jobs, duties, and 
not having quality of life. We hope that this program has answered many of the questions you may have about your upcoming DBS surgery. In order to ensure the best possible surgical outcome for you, we'd like you and your family members to review the information provided in the following links several days before the surgery. Dr. Cedric and I would like to thank sincerely everyone involved in creating this video, especially the time volunteered by our patients. We hope you found this video educational and informative. Thank you. Thank you.